<laughs> Freaking washing machine is just going ape shit back there. That's awesome. You know, this might be something to think about on the remodel. Make a subfloor just for the washer and dryer to set them on something more solid because the, even though it's a metal floor, it's got flex to it. So if I ran a 2x4 subfloor just to set them on, that might help because it would spread the load out over maybe two or three stringers or subframes, floor, whatever. Not what I was thinking about though. Um, I made a second pot of coffee and I couldn't remember if I actually put it on, turned it on. It's on. Yes. If you're running the generator, you got to make a pot of coffee. That just seems like a good idea. So, <clears throat> again, I was just kind of kicking this around in my head. I think what I want to do, set up the drain field, but, okay, so, Stage one, catch the water from the shower and the laundry into a container. A couple rain barrels. I think if I catch them into a couple of those trash cans that have the equalizer on them, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Then, on the output side of the rain barrel, up higher, have an overflow that goes to the drain field. So if I end up with, I've got more water than I can use, now it goes to the drain field, but I hold it for a while and do my water stilling process. See if I can you know, get some usable amount of water out of that. And I can test that on a very low scale. Just see if it works. I think I like the idea of adding a little electric fan just to blow the vapor. That might be a good idea. And, it, okay, this would, okay, this is why I keep talking these ideas through until I see the, the obvious flaw and then I can tweak it. But if I blow the vapor into the condensing tank, we want to cool the condensing tank. What if the condensing tank was in the ground? That would definitely be cooler than in the air. Okay. So you could probably blow, air would blow down, no problem. So have your condensing tank, or even just condensing tank covered in dirt, it would be cooler than um, the one that's in the sun. So the sun heats it up, it evaporates, the fan blows it into the condensing tank that's, yeah, covered in dirt or insulated in some way, so it would be cooler, at least. Um, later on, when I do my thermal mass with the deep water pipes, or deep air pipes, that could cool that down to 50 degrees. You'd get awesome condensation then. Okay, so that's a good idea. But closed loop your, your vent so that it blows into the condensing tank and then another air line goes back so that you got constant airflow between the two it would tend to condense more on the cool side. Because I got, I got a bottle that I peed in and the top of it was just covered in water vapor. And that's essentially clean water, really. Nobody's gonna drink it like that, but water evaporates, only the water evaporates. Everything else would stay in there. So it's free and clean water. Okay. So if, you know, the tiny amount of urine that I pee compared to how much wastewater is in the laundry, I think if I peed into that system also, catch the water vapor coming off for distilled water, and use that to take showers in, it, it, unless I smell urine, I'm gonna call it basically good enough. All right? So I'm good. Okay, now jumping ship on that one. If that takes care of my water situation, wastewater, you know, so fresh water is basically done with the manifold. If I wastewater recycle and then to the drain field, that completely eliminates the septic system, all right? So, rather than the expense and time of 
because yeah, here's the thing. A septic tank was going to cost me about a thousand dollars. Just to get your head around that, you're buying a tank to put your poop in. However, if I jump, you know, it's like because I resisted the idea of buying one of the really nice composting toilets because they're about a thousand dollars. That seems like a lot of money for something that you poop on. But if I mix, you know, if I go and buy, I think they say peat moss. So you, you buy your peat moss, and you don't put that much peat moss in. And so peat moss, I think, is relatively inexpensive. Right. Now, I, I, you know, when I probably the last time I thought about this, I was kind of like, well, I don't need compost, okay? But if I get down to my greenhouse project, especially my underground greenhouse project, I'm gonna need better soil than what I have here. So if I can start buying a bag of peat moss every now and then and start storing my compost, and what I'm kind of thinking is build a little shed, you know, three and a half walls, uh, put a roof over it so the water, the rain doesn't wash it away, and then just let it sit there. I don't know that there's any situation with that as far as you don't have to use it at a certain amount of time or anything like that. All right. So coffee's done. Then I could be building up a pile of compost. And I think I could be mixing compost with soil, local soil, you know, look around in the in the creek bed where it's more silty. And I think if I mixed compost with that, that would probably be a good start. So I'm not looking to build a you know forty acre garden here. But the thought occurred to me every now and then that if I can start small, build a little greenhouse. <clears throat> if I'm going to take the bus windows out anyway, use them in the greenhouse. I right, just have a row or two of windows, nice slanted roof. I don't care if a little bit of water leaks through the windows. <laughs> it's a greenhouse, you know. Um, but like, okay, a few times I've planted an apple. I've not yet seen anything happen from that. Right. One time I even watered it. You know, usually I just dig a hole, stick it in there, okay, whatever. Right. But what if I figure out a way that I could germinate those apple seeds, right? And every seed could become an apple, so you don't, you don't need the whole core. You know, so separate them, start them off like my mom used to do in you know, yogurt containers or whatever, and get each seed to start and then just keep transplanting it until you get to the point where maybe you could grow a little apple tree, right? Well, if I'm recycling gray water anyway, maybe I, you know, I'm, you know, near term, I think if I can grow potatoes, especially if I can figure out how to grow potatoes in hydroponics, right? Now, usually when you dig your potatoes, I'm gonna research this, you know, because usually when you, you grow your potato, you dig the hill, Right, and then that's the end of it. Well, what if you could just cut off the potato with the plant still grow? Could you get the plant to keep growing? I don't know. Um. But you know, my, my near term, I think potatoes, strawberries, probably carrots. Now a couple things there. Well, you, you don't want to put poops on things like potatoes and carrots, right? Because you're directly exposed to it. I think compost is better for like peas that grow above the ground, or beans, or something like that. I, I don't know. 
I think near term, if I can get anything to grow, Ooh, I got something to grow, you know. But again, if I could figure out the hydroponic side of it, that seems like a good way to go. Because you're going to have the water. Maybe I'd even filter the water a little before I put it out there, you know. Or maybe just dedicate 100 gallons to the greenhouse. And if it's reasonably tight in there, so you don't lose a lot of water to evaporation outside of the greenhouse. And this is why underground makes a lot of sense. And if you're doing hydroponics with recirculating water, I suspect I won't have to add too much water continuously to it. How about that? So, anyway, I, I, I just cannot keep looking at it. It's like, okay, if I build my drain field, that'll take care of my excess gray water. But I'm going to catch it before it goes out. So that I don't just go straight to the drain field. I could, you know, if I can reclaim a large portion of it, you know, wash the truck, wash the motorcycle, still it to make shower water. Also still, oh, this was the other thing. So the stilled water, the stilled water could go to the greenhouse, all right? And then open a valve and let the soap, the really bottom third of the soap scum, let that go out. You know, let, just let that go to the drain field. And just, you know, let that go. Um, at this point, then, because if I if I don't do a septic system, I don't have to worry about what kind of soaps I use because I don't want to kill my bacteria. Well, in a drain field, it's not an issue. It's just gone. I mean, it's never gone, but it's I don't need to have bacteria in my drain field. That's not an issue. So I would take the cleanest of the water, the greenhouse, and reusing them, and so on. Now, where I'm going is, if I do get a composting toilet, if I look at composting toilet versus septic tank, they're almost the same price. And if it's just me, I get the feeling that these people that empty their composting toilets aren't feeling it's a burden that how often they empty it. I'm going to go back and read the reviews, but because you're adding peat moss into the system, and then when it gets to a certain level, then you take it out and you dump it. By the time you dump it, it's not really smelling like poops anymore, so it's a less awful experience than what I'm doing now. And you know, emptying my poop bucket is not a big deal. It's, you know, briefly, uh, and then you're done. Okay. So if I can make compost, uh, and then things like uh, coffee grounds, dump them in there. Um, later on, get something to shred up all the dead sagebrush that's around here. Like every time I dig one out, I threw it in a pile. So I've got a pretty good pile of those that I could shred up add them to the compost pile right, for, you know, whatever you call it, bulk up media or something like that. Okay, so shred that. Um, it should be a good deal. Okay? And stuff does grow in the soil out here. You know, and I, I remember, well, like you think about how they're growing apples in the Wenatchee now. They used to grow them down in the valley, but that became very expensive real estate, so the guys kept tearing out the orchards and selling, and they put houses in. So now they're growing apples in a less productive area, but they're still growing them pretty good because they did the, the I think they called the trellis system. So instead of having a big, strong tree, they're almost copying a vineyard. So they run cables, and then they get the branches to su support off the cables, because you know before, you get so much weight of apples on the tree that they'd have to walk around with a, just a crap load of sticks and prop up every branch so that it wouldn't break the branch. That's how much, how much yield they had. But a lot of the su success to the Wenatchee apples is they used the water from the river and did massive irrigation. Okay. But otherwise, it's like here. So if I had enough water, I could grow pretty much anything here boost my soil a little bit, go buy some potting soil, 
you know, you buy $100 worth of soil, no big deal because you mix that with the dirt you already have, add you compost to it. You know, if you can grow food, and I got to think, okay, if I can supplement the food that I have to go all the way to El Paso or all the way to Fort Hancock to buy, and get to the point where maybe I can skip going to town, you know, because I go and I buy mostly fro a little bit of frozen food like frozen burritos, I buy some eggs, but it's mostly canned food. Okay. Okay, so I can go once a month and stock up on canned food. All right. You know, if I buy you know, two cans for every day, I don't typically eat two cans every day, but if I buy two cans for every day, so that would be 30 days, say it's two bucks a can, so that's four, so that's a hundred, you know, say a hundred, hundred fifty dollars worth of groceries for a month, okay. Well, if I also was growing potatoes and some strawberries, strawberries would be great for my smoothies. Um, anything that's grown, it's gotta be better than what comes out of a can. Right. Now, the things that I buy that are fresh, basically eggs, Strawberries, I used to buy a lot. I haven't been lately, but you know, if I had a little bit more cooling to where I could freeze them, yeah. Cut them up, freeze them, make your smoothies. Great. Um, now the bus rocks, we're in spin cycle. <laughs> Freaking everything goes. Just starting and then it's not such a big deal. It's such a small issue. I'm like, it's funny now. Anyway, I guess, you know, by by waiting a little bit longer again, you know, if I had money in the beginning, I probably would have said, you know what, just go get a septic tank and be done. Right? Well, part of the issue is the composting toilet requires no plumbing, right? So what that means is I don't have to cut a hole in the floor and, and you know I don't have to dig the big freaking hole, buy the septic tank, do all the plumbing, and then tie it into my drain field. You know, so now I can say I'm gonna recycle most of the water that would have gone to the drain field. Maybe I don't need the drain field at all. Maybe I can keep just dumping it once in a while out into that that hole. But instead of dumping it straight in the hole where it's just lost, I catch it and I reuse some of it. Okay? So if somebody gets all bent out of shape, I've got a composting toilet and I'm recycling my gray water. That'd be a fun court case. I'm not dumping raw sewage. Catch up with the new century. And so many old people in, in politics. There? You can't do that. It's not in the book. Right in your book, asshole. Alright, moving on. I don't know. I don't want to go undersize on this, but the truth of the matter is if I only shower three times a week and do one or two loads of laundry a week. Also, if I think I like the idea if I okay, so here here's a thought. This wasn't on my original agenda, but laundry water goes out, gets held in two or three trash cans that equalize. All right. Let them fill up. Don't let them dump right away. Here's the key. So you hold the water, set up your evaporation tanks, okay, solar stills. So the water, because those trash cans, when I open them, I've got all kinds of water just hanging on the on the lid. Okay, so encourage that. Let the water come out, condense. Set up a, I think a series of pipes coming off the top would catch the water vapor. I got an experiment with that on small scale. The one I remember seeing, the guy took two Coke bottles, attached the lids together with a hole in between them. I don't remember if there's anything fancy about that or if he glued them and just drilled a hole, but setting them at an angle. 
the vapor would come up into the top one, condense and fall down into the little low point formed by the Coke bottle, you know, the, the curved at the top, right? So the water would just sit there. Okay, that's free water right there. Now, I think what he was doing is just as a quick workaround, unscrewing it carefully, and then whatever was in that low point, pouring it into something. Now, that's not a bad idea, you know. What I'm thinking, though, is if you did something like that, because you want lots of area for it to condense in, and I suspect, I don't know how much it would condense right away, or if you get the water vapor to come up in the top. If we take the Coke bottle idea, fill the bottom one up, okay, the vapor comes up and off. If we ran a straight, straight pipe off the top and then had a smaller pipe come up and through it, that would be an exit. As the water vapor condensed, if it would be held in the bowl of the top one and then run back out again, something like that. I need to get my head around that and just kind of tweak on it for a while until I get it figured out. Um, and does does the vapor naturally just condense when it's there? Because if you get enough vapor, it would condense even on a warm surface, I think. Or do you need to wait till nighttime for the vapor to condense? All right. So if you could fill up steam tubes and then let them cool at night that would condense. So I need to read up on that some more. The purpose of that, if I end up with 50 or 100 gallons of, you know, quote unquote, wastewater from the shower, one, I can use that directly to flush the toilet. That's easy. I can wash the motorcycle, I can wash the truck. Okay. If I could catch that as vapor and turn it back into basically more or less fresh water, I could totally shower with that. I suspect that would be good enough just as is condensed water. Or what did they call that? Distilled water. All right. That's about as good as it gets. That's pretty damn clean. If I use that as a shower and not drink it, that's free water. That's 100 gallons of free showers. That's half of the truck tank. Now, how fast will that happen? You know, one guy I think was getting a liter or two a day. That's not enough for a shower, but if we scale it up, you know, if we spread it out on a bigger surface, we should we get more? We got plenty of sun and plenty of heat. One less time driving the truck, right? So that's something to be looking at. How can I easily make something like that? Do I need a clear top or can I just use a black trash can with a lid and then run a pipe off at the top and maybe a fan or something to blow the moist air off? How would it condense, right? Because I should be able to prototype it with trash cans and some tin foil or something goofy like that just to see if it works. If you got free water dripping out of this, you know, then go back, you know, start building my trash cans for water catching. I don't know. Because, you know, rainwater, keep it clean. You know, town water, keep it, you know, town water should be totally drinkable, and then we'd filter it to get the crap out that they put in so I can drink it. Rainwater, I should be able to drink it straight out. So then I love the idea of using the truck tank. I got it, that's something on my list, I gotta get the truck tank, make a rack, I think above the hydrant, and then build a ferro cement cage around it to protect it so it doesn't get all the sun and stuff like that. Catch the rainwater, shoot it into that. Then it would be basically in a clean tank. Um, if it's not in the sun, it shouldn't get algae, I hope. Maybe if I clean it a little bit once in a while, bleach it or something like that, and then Brita filter to drink it again, get the bleach out. If you get too much, dump it back into the manifold. But don't use rainwater for doing laundry, use that for drinking and showers.